Hey folks, welcome to the Safety Solutions Academy YouTube channel, and of course, my underground lair. You know, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk with you folks today about some of the things that are going on in the firearms world and the training industry, and how it is that those issues might be affecting you. You know, what's going on right now with guns and ammunition, I have to say, seems a bit surreal. We've had a lot of years of pretty good times. The availability of firearms, the availability of ammunition, despite the fact that ammunition seems more expensive, it's been relatively affordable compared to the price increases we've seen in other parts of our lives. And what we're experiencing right now, the shortage of firearms and the shortage of ammunition, well, it's really not so different from what it is we've seen at other times in our lives as well. It was recently as 2008, we had some pretty major issues with regards to availability of ammunition and availability of firearms. We all made it through that time, and I'm guessing that most of us are going to make it through this time as well, as uncomfortable, frustrating, and concerning as it might feel. I've been feeling a lot of questions recently, and several questions today specifically about ammo availability and training, and really what it is that people should do about it. I understand why folks are probably concerned about the availability of ammunition. It makes sense. I gotta say, I'm a little bit concerned about it as well. But I do have some suggestions, some things you can think about so that you can maximize your training in a situation where ammunition might be a little bit short. The first suggestion that I have for you is to plan ahead as far as your training goes. You know, a lot of folks don't necessarily need to plan ahead as far as their schedule goes. They've got a lot of open weekends. Training happens on weekends. Feel like training this weekend? Huh, I'll go train this weekend. Well, with ammunition and short supply, it's not so easy to do that. You need to think about the goals that you want to accomplish this time around in training. I don't know how long that's going to be. Maybe it's this year you need to worry about. Maybe it's just the next few months. Maybe it's the next four years. I don't know. Think about what you want to accomplish, prioritize, consider your resources as far as ammunition go, and then plan ahead for that training. Think about what training is most important. Make sure you have the ammunition for that training and then put a plan in place. So make sure you plan ahead for your training, especially when it comes to your formal training. We might want to, when it comes to less formal training or a practice, the time we spend at the range just going over things that we've learned in our formal training, we might want to streamline that time. This isn't the, the time or the place probably to head out to the range and burn through a whole bunch of ammo just because it's fun to shoot. Now, I suppose if shooting is your pastime and you're doing it because you enjoy it and you have the resources, you have the money, you have the ammunition, go ahead and have that and have a good time. But if your goal is to train, if your goal is to practice, if your goal is to improve, you probably want to make that practice and that improvement as efficient as possible. So take some time and write down the goals for your practice sessions when you head to the range. Don't forget that you don't have to necessarily burn hundreds or thousands of rounds when you're at the range to improve. If you're concise with your goals, you may make a lot of progress with 25 or even 50 rounds. The law enforcement agencies have found over the past 10 or so years, let's call it a decade, that you don't have to necessarily shoot a lot of rounds to have officers improve with their skills with their firearms. What you probably need more is regular practice. So take that ammo budget that you normally spend on a week, spend it over four weeks you'll probably still make some good improvements, especially if you refocus what it is that you're training for. Just a suggestion. Keep in mind as well, when you're thinking about planning your training, we need to think about the plausibility principle. If you're not familiar with the principle, do a search on YouTube, do a search on Google, it'll pop up. It's a concept from ICE training. And really what it talks about is the idea that we need to keep our training relatively realistic based on what it is that's most likely to happen to us. It's most plausible to happen to us. If we keep that in mind and we don't spend a lot of time training for Red Dawn or for taking siege of uh, some castle, whatever, you get my point. 
we can spend a lot of training effort, energy, resources doing things that we're never going to be faced with. Focus in on what's most likely to happen and what you need to train most. And that will help to stretch that training dollar, that training resource, that ammunition that's hard to come by right now. It'll straight, uh, stretch it out farther. That's the idea. We also can spend some time, effort, and energy making sure that we can actually get a hold of some ammunition. It's out there. It sure isn't there in the abundance that we're used to it being there, but it's there. I was recently down in South Carolina for a training course, had some students on day one say, you know, I'm probably not going to be making it back for day two because I don't have ammo. I was out of my own territory. don't really know Greenville, South Carolina that way. But with a few phone calls and some time on social media, we put together as a group more than a thousand rounds of ammunition, which was well over what it is we needed to get the students through the day of day two of training. So my suggestions to you are get to know the people behind the counter at your sporting goods store, at your local Walmart, at your gun shop. Let them know that you have a training course that's coming up. Because, of course, remember, you're planning ahead. Let them know you've got a training course coming up. Let them know that you're seeking out ammo. See if they'll help you out to find that ammunition. All you need to buy, if you've got a course coming up in 10 weeks, 8 weeks, if you're able to buy 100 rounds a week, Well, you can put together 800 rounds pretty easily in the eight weeks leading up to a course. So don't be afraid to pick up little bits of that ammunition at a time. It'll be surprising how much you can put together over some time with some effort. So seek out that ammunition. Don't forget about your online sources either. There are places online where you can order ammunition, and they're probably limited right now. But check back, and you can check back daily. You can sit at your desk at home, at your desk at work, and do a quick search through your local ammo, uh, I shouldn't say local, through your internet-based ammo retailers and find out who's got what. So just some some thoughts about uh, making sure that you get that ammo when it's out there. And if you do find that big stash of ammo and you don't need the 2,000 rounds that you find, well, don't buy it. Leave it there for somebody else that might need it more. You never know who needs to do some training, who needs to buy some ammunition for defensive purposes, whatever the case might be. So I guess my point is, don't be a hoarder. If you've got what you need, then let the rest of it go. I think also one of the things that you can do when it comes to shortages in ammunition is expect some more from your instructors. What do I mean by that? Well, You know, an instructor shows up at a course with a set of goals. Hopefully that set of goals is aligned with the student's goals. And what we often find when we're dealing with instructional situations is things change. They fluctuate. We start out with a plan and we find out that we may not be able to proceed according to the plan. Maybe the weather turns bad. I mean, you know, bad to the point where you can't train. You know, thunderstorm warnings, tornado warnings. I've had that happen where I've had to leave the range doesn't necessarily mean that training has to end. What it means is we need to change what it is we're doing as instructors. We need to be flexible. We need to pass on some conceptual ideas as opposed to physical skills. That's still training. It's still important. Maybe it's even more important. I suppose that depends on the student. But what I'm getting at is if you're 250 rounds short for a weekend of training, have the expectation that your instructor is going to be able to work with you to still give you what it is you need from your course. They probably can tell you a little bit about how you can reduce your round count throughout the weekend to make sure that you've got plenty of ammo to make it through all the exercises. You can probably, if you're having that situation as a class, expect that your instructor is going to be able to drive more towards the conceptual side of the course. My point is, have a conversation with your instructor and let them know what it is you need from the course. If you show up with 50 rounds for a thousand round count course, don't expect your instructor to work magic. But at the same time, if you show up with 800 when you're supposed to have a thousand, I think that's pretty reasonable for an instructor to have some, some tricks in their little toolkit to make sure that you can make it through your course, have a successful and productive learning time. You know, our formal training is important. And a lot of people right now have had the attitude of, well, I'm just going to hold off. I'm not going to sign up for that class because I don't know if I'm going to get the ammo that I need. 
I don't think that's a good idea. If you feel like you need the training, make it happen. Sign up for the class, seek out the ammo, work with your instructor, and you're going to find that you're probably going to get what it is you need out of that course. Don't let an actual or even a perceived shortage of ammo keep you from getting the training that you need. Folks, head on out there. Get yourself some training. When you do, make sure you keep it simple. Please stay safe. And as always, have a great day.